continue to sweep through the playoffs, each going 12-0. We're going to have eight days of no hoops, gentlemen, between the Eastern Western Conference Finals and the NBA Finals. Max, how big of a problem will it be for the NBA to have a week off before the finals because of sweeps? It might not be a problem at all. might be a good thing. Uh, no one's going to remember or, or care much that they beat the hell out of these teams on the way to meeting each other if we get a classic finals. Let's not forget, this is the clash of the titans. I've been saying it since the beginning of the season. I don't understand all the complaints. You have two super teams, one in each conference, which is awesome. They've, they've split the last two finals, and they were both thrilling finals, uh, watching what LeBron could do with no one on the team first because everyone was hurt, and then watching him come all the way back on the greatest regular season team of all time on the road. That was amazing. And now that, that team that he came back on loaded even more, and then the Cavs got better. They loaded up a little bit more, and they're on a collision course in a trilogy, a rubber match to see whose era this is. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Unless, of course, it turns out that Golden State, because of Kevin Durant, sweeps the Cavs. Or the Cavs somehow have Golden State's number or their heart or whatever, and the Cavs just sweep Golden State. If something like that happens and we have a letdown in the finals, we will... We will remember the fact that the conference champ, the, not just the conference finals, but the Cavs and the Warriors' road to the finals was very, w w they met with little resistance, really. We'll remember that, but not if it's a classic finals. Stephen A., I remember, like, you think about the Super Bowl, right? I remember the Giants uh, in 86 against Denver. They had the typical two weeks before the big game, and there was all this promotion and hype, and I was psyched as a 13-year-old New York football Giants fan. Oh, look at this. You got to ramp up for it and then before the buffalo bills super bowl 25 um a couple years later uh there wasn't it was for whatever reason there was one week between the conference finals as i recall conference championship games and the super bowl and i felt cheated as a fan like there's not as much fanfare and promotion and hype and building up to the big event there's a little bit less pent-up demand in that case um now, the Giants won both, and the second one was thrilling, and so that's what I you know, what usually remember. Oh, my God, that was an amazing Super Bowl. So the most important thing is the outcome. But Stephen A., extra time to essentially promote the event. If that's good in football, why isn't that good in basketball? I reject that. I think it's fine so long as we get a great finals. Well, like I said, you're a busy man. You're very preoccupied with a very hectic schedule that doesn't involve that much travel, by the way, so you don't mind. You know, people like me who get stuck in airports, you understand, having to watch some of these games. I keep bringing that up to you. You just keep ignoring it. But that's a different subject for another day. What I would say to you is this. This is going to be a problem, just not right now, because we waited all years for this trill all year long for this trilogy. So the fact that it seems en route to that with such a level of dominance, there's a collision course that we all predicted that's coming true. And as a result, it will be LeBron and the crew fully loaded, we hope, against Golden State fully loaded, we hope. And we can finally decide there's no excuses like it was year one when LeBron didn't have Kyrie and Kevin, and Kevin Love. And last year when Draymond Green got suspended, Iguodala and Bogut go down. It's not going to be that kind of situation, Steph, we hope. We hope this year. But once this season is over, don't get me wrong, the finals are going to be epic, and the ratings are going to be big time, and deservedly so. And the ratings here are good thus far in these playoffs as well. But when the dust settles, Max Kellerman, and this season is over, you're going to hear a lot of folks lamenting some of the storylines you and I have lamented how the regular season wasn't that much of a priority, how stars took games off, particularly on the road, and fans were robbed. You're going to hear about the lack of competition that existed in the postseason, how lopsided it was, how, how much bad basketball we had seen during the season from time to time. And there are going to be concerns. I am not guessing. I am speaking factually because Commissioner Silver has already addressed this issue at one point. Some of the players have already spoken about it. Other, pud other pundits have spoken about it. And we're going to take a reprieve from it all because why complain and sweat and lament when we're getting exactly what we wanted for these finals in, a couple, in, a, in, in less than two weeks. No need to do that. But once it's over and we have an opportunity to reflect on the season that was, there's going to be a lot of things to address and how it could have been better and it wasn't because of certain huh. things that happened. 
Well, look. First of all, let me just address when you're talking about players resting just very quickly because then I want to get back to really the issue here, which is these super teams and destroying competition on the way to the finals. Um, who's resting? Who are we talking about? I believe it was KD who brought this up. We're talking about like five players. Like with LeBron rests, people are upset. Westbrook doesn't rest. Harden doesn't rest. A guy like Anthony Davis or Joel Embiid, who I'm sure people want to see, is probably a good idea for them to rest because they're injury prone. I don't think people would take too much exception. Yeah, that guy gets hurt a lot. Who are we really talking about? Steph? Maybe he should rest a little bit at times. He's not the biggest dude in the world, right? And, and look what happened when he didn't rest. Last year, he was compromised for the playoffs. So that's my, I, I think that's overblown. Players okay. resting, number one. Number two. I need to address that, but go path, ahead. Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, and then I'll, I just want to make sure I get time to get the in reason why the final the point only about, thing that, about... I got no foul, that's fair. The only thing I want to say is this. When you talk about rest, Max, we're talking about a six-month period spanning more than 180 days where there are 82 games. They're not usually practicing because of the workload that they're going to have during games. If, you, if you're going to have a problem with that, then you should have a problem with guys playing in the summertime, for crying out loud. You're working, you're getting yourself in shape, you're doing everything to prepare you for the season at a time when you have ample opportunity to rest, not just to sit five to six months that you're off, to but that. also yep. off days in between games. Go ahead. Let me respond to that. The problem is that maybe rules changes does do address this, right? But, but, but let, let, me, let me respond to that this way. It's never in a vacuum. It's always compared to the competition. So if Harden plays every day, he should still be able to play very well in the playoffs and play a lot of minutes in the playoffs, except that he's competing against other players who, may, who are looking for a competitive advantage, and their coaches are, and they maybe think, you know what? If we rest our superstar a little bit, his legs will be a little better. We'll, ha we'll be able to play him a few more minutes in the finals. We will have a competitive advantage against the other team, and people will always see competitive advantages. So unless you change the rules, and I don't know exactly how you do that, I think this will continue to be an issue, and I don't know how big an issue it actually is. I think it's a little bit overblown. Okay, the, 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 the dominance of the two conference titans that we were talking about earlier and how that affects these playoffs. I give it the example uh, again. What's the most memorable Olympic basketball experience of our lifetime? It was the Dream Team. Now, the issue with the Dream Team is that Angola and places like this were no match for Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley and Magic and even the remains of Larry Bird and Patrick Ewing and David Robinson, etc. Right? There were no match. So, so the one downside was there was no competition. And I will always bring up this idea, Stephen A. What if? On the way to the gold medal round, waiting for the dream team, was the redeem team with LeBron James and KD and all these guys. Well, that would have fixed the problem. The problem wasn't that Angola couldn't compete against the U.S. The problem was there was no Joe Frazier waiting for Muhammad Ali for the title, ultimately. And in this case, there is. The two titans will clash right. in the finals, and to me, that addresses the fact that it's lopsided in the conference finals. Okay, and Stephen A. We don't have time for me to pick apart that ridiculous argument you just made another That's time. A great argument. And you mentioned earlier, Stephen A., Adam Silver did just speak on the subject earlier on SportsCenter, and he essentially said we should celebrate their excellence, and people are already anointing these teams. Golden State hadn't won a championship in 40 years. The Cavs never won one, and they got a long way to go to becoming dynasties like we've seen in the past. Well, he said that just this morning, but yeah. he said something else about guys taking rest and other issues a few months ago. That's what I was alluding to, not yeah. what he said this Th morning. This was specifically on the issue, yeah, that we just addressed. When we come back, though, gentlemen, we got to leave it there. Jose Batista got into it yesterday with the Braves. Was their retaliation for his pimping of a home run fair? Plus, Paul George could have been one of the